State enters today's contest winners of two straight, but perhaps their toughest opponent to date in 2018 as the Bobcats welcome the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Appalachian State is a perennial powerhouse. They've given everybody scared in Power 5 conferences, and because Coach Everett Withers being an alum, this has special meaning. Appalachian State 6-2 and two overall this season with a Sunbelt Conference record of 4-1. and one. But good news for Texas State. Again, winners of two straight. It's their longest winning streak in four years as this young program comes together. And their quarterback, Willie Jones, coming off a career day, 387 total yards last week in the win at Georgia State. Not only that, that put him on the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award honorable mention list. And number eight is going to be looking to get going here at home against App State. And a tough defense in App State for Willie Jones and the Bobcats to face number one in all of the Sunbelt Conference. Good news for App State as they welcome back their quarterback, Zach Rogers. Well, Zach, number 12, comes in with an offense that really likes to run the ball. He'll be a big part of that today. And he also knows that he's got something special to prove because they barely won 20 to 19 last season. Last season, Appalachian State with a tackle of Texas State's Elijah King of a six inch line to preserve that victory. Perhaps another tough tight one coming up this afternoon. We'll find out next, the Mountaineers and the Bobcats right here. Texas State football powered by the new 2019 Ram 1500 built to serve. Appalachian State won the coin toss. They elected to defer the option to the second half. Bobcats will get the ball first here in a cool, breezy Saturday afternoon. Our eyes and ears on the sideline, Brooke Shoemaker. Good afternoon, Brooke. David, you said it cold, breezy, but it is perfect college. So there a little recap catch up from last year when App State was in town just a year ago, and it perhaps was a little bit of a closer game than most people would have expected for an Appalachian team that would eventually go on to win the conference. And Texas State ending the season just two and ten. App State trailed ten to nothing in that game and came back with a last-minute defensive stand. Today it's Veterans Day, Heroes Day. Texas State will be rocking these helmets that have the camo logo and a little bit of a camouflage face mask along with shoes and undershirts that have camouflage as well, guys. Good stuff, Brooke, and thank you. So no surprise, Steve, App State deferring to get who is the best defense and all of the Sun Belt Conference on the field first, allowing just under 17 points a game this year. Well, Willie Jones III gets an opportunity. And uh, like a famous quarterback that I know says, Jeff Blake, keep it on the hard eight. So let's see what uh, number eight can do today for the Texas State Bobcats. Michael Rubino, Jr. from Apex, North Carolina, has the ball teed up at the 35. We're about to get underway here in San Marcos. Glad you're with us today. Deep kick and a touchback to get this one started. So Willie Jones. Let's give you his numbers from last week. In the win at Georgia State, 21 of 26 passing for 325 yards. It's easily the best passing game he has had in his young Texas State career, sophomore from Silsby, Texas. He added 62 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. He's been able to get most of his production with his legs this season up until last week when for the first time he really was a solid two-way quarterback. Well, that's what you want to see. You want to go after a defense who is this good and keep them off balance with the run-pass option. Robert Brown Jr. is one of three tailbacks we'll see for Texas State. The sophomore from Houston is with Jones in the backfield. A pitch to who will be the all-conference tight end, Keenan Brown in the Sun Pilt Conference. And Appalachian State will show that good pursuit all day Brown long. As Brown, the grad transfer from Houston, who played college last season at Oklahoma State, gains three. Well, I tell you, and you have to have that type of size because this defense is going to pursue inside out. And to get three yards is good. I like to have four or more on first down. Brown, 37 catches on the season, but they've used him running the ball as well this year. He has two rushing touchdowns. Jones, quick throw, and it's Brown the catch. A first down, past the 40-yard line, That's and brought down just shy of the Brown. 45. First down. Good Bobcats. play calling mix between run and pass, and it's okay if you use the same guy as long as you're getting positive yards. This App State team allows just 285 yards per contest, just 157 through the air, and that is best in the Sun Belt. They did not allow an offensive score last week in a win at Coastal Carolina. Flip to the diminutive Tyler Watts. A block up field Tyler and a first Watts down. The greatest thing is you don't see any hankies of the yellow nature on a play where you get more than enough for a first down. 
just 5'8", 165, the graduate from Brenham, Texas, out of bounds at the App State 45. This is certainly a litmus test for this Texas State team. They've won two straight against New Mexico State and Georgia State. Brown, Robert forward Brown progress, here. gives the sophomore from Houston a yard. Chris Willis was there, first sophomore defensive end from Shelby, North Carolina. Good pursuit there and a good push up front by the defensive line. And uh, usually he who wins the line of scrimmage wins the play, wins the series, and ultimately wins the game. Straight run for Jones. Brown, the lead blocker, squeezes through. First down, Jones lost the football on the turf. App State thinks they have it. Mountaineer football. That's a great effort by Willie Jones, Willie Jones but you've Willie got to take care of the football. Uh, it doesn't matter if you gain all the yards, if you give it over to your opponent. And I think Willie Jones has got up a little slow. He was not real excited uh, about the scrum that involved uh, the losing of the ball, but right there, hopefully he can uh, regroup. Listen, good yardage gain to push into App State territory. So right now on the 33, it's still reasonable for this defense to come back. See him holding the ball loosely, and it was Josh Thomas, the junior strong safety from Montgomery, Alabama, forcing the fumble. For as good of a defense this is for App State, just their third fumble recovery all year. But Zach Thomas and the App State offense with it from their own 33. Thomas with time, lofting a pass wide open to the tight end, Colin Reed. And Reed slung down past the Texas State 30. That was a great scheme because you sent two receivers effectively one after the other, and it makes sense to take the first guy who's in your area or your zone, but then the trailing route is wide open because everyone thinks that nobody's going to send two receivers almost in the same area. Junior Colin Reed, seventh catch of the season, but his biggest of the year as they set up shot from the Texas State 24 and on the jet sweep. Room to run past the 10-yard line, and it'll be first in goal. Dominique Heath, graduate from Huntersville, North Carolina, with the big game. Yeah, and Dominique Heath looking good, coming near side to us. And all you got to do is follow the wall, follow your blockers, and a sweep like that can pick up good yardage. First down on the carry. Texas State playing without their all-world linebacker and Brian London. His 311 career tackles will have to wait to see the field until the second half. Call for a targeting penalty in the second half last week at Georgia State. Thomas flips it to Heath, and he'll stroll into the end zone for the score. Off the turnover, a three-play drive just like that. Mountaineers on top. Yes, and a well-designed play again. And I think a lot of times you can make what I call football judo work in your favor. You bring the pursuing defense to you, and then right there, a nice, well-dropped ball to the running back out of the backfield, and Zach Thomas back in action. The 43-yard pass to Colin Reed set up the 16-yard run for Heath, and then the eight-yard reception. Thomas to Heath, Heath's fourth touchdown of the year. Extra point up and through by the sophomore Chandler Staten, who's now 70 of 70 on PATs in his young upstate career. Mountaineers on the road, strike first early. Our first quarter brought to you by Aqua Brewing, artisanal cuisine, craft beer, community feel, live music, and San Marcos roots. David Salzman, Steve Foster, Brooke Shoemaker with you here on the campus of Texas State University. Zach Thomas, three for three passing on the drive for all 67 yards. But I called a run, that 16-yarder by Dominic Heath, officially just a, a shovel pass. And so Thomas perfect after his first action since October 25th. He was knocked out of App State's only Sunbelt loss at Georgia Southern early in that contest but three for three on his first drive back in a couple of weeks. You can see that he definitely makes a difference for the offense. On the return. Good run past the 25-yard line. Jamari Asha Reed. And Texas State will set up shot from just shy of its own 30. 
This is interesting, a quick quarterback change now for Texas State. Willie Jones, the third on that first drive, fumbling the ball away to App State. And so here comes Tyler Vitt, the true freshman from San Antonio, 765 yards passing this season, completing 66% of his throws. So it is Vitt already in for Jones. Caleb Twyford is the tailback, coming off a career-high 73 yards rushing last week at Georgia State. Gets the call here, and Steve, the yards are coming for Texas State early. Just need to hold on to the football. Absolutely. You know, the five points of protection, I always stress, I don't care if we lose yards, but don't lose the ball. Gain of seven for Twyford. No 73 yards last week on just eight carries. Twyford again the other way, and this time brought down from behind. Fell forward for maybe a yard, and it'll be third and short. Little run blitz, stunt on the right side, left side of the defense coming in to try to disrupt and make a tackle before the play could get going near side to us, David. Some good news for Texas State is that for the first time in eight games, they start the same offensive line in two straight contests. Vitt flipping it out to Twyford, needs the 38 and has it. Past the 40, takes a hit, stays on his feet, and down at the 45. Great run after the catch. And the difference between a rusher and, and, and a quarterback when you run, we like to square our shoulders and get those shoulder pads and use them against the defender. A lot of times quarterbacks get the yards and then they look to find a safe place to land, and that sometimes uh, allows for people to try to strip the ball away. Twyford took the big hit from the senior cornerback Tay Hayes. Keenan Brown thrown down past midfield, gain of six. And the other thing is, two times now, the Bobcats have gotten across midfield and made good progress on their offensive sets. Vitt with a couple of starts this season. Just a true freshman, however, faking the jet sweep and keeping it up the middle, and he's a yard shy of the marker. And again, another wise decision because you want to keep this defense pursuing the wrong place. If they want to go wide, quarterback keeps, gets good yardage, makes it third and very manageable with one yard to go. And hurrying it up, the handoff, and this is Brown. Forward progress, I think, is just enough. He's going to get a pretty good mark. And it will be enough to move the change just past the 45. And again, squaring those shoulder pads up, the officiating crew will give you that because of the effort and the push that you have behind you. And you know even now, David, the line can actually block you forward. Anthony D. Taylor, Jr. from Denton, Texas, now the tailback. So we've already seen all three on the field for the Bobcats. But unexpectedly seeing our second quarterback. A three-wide set for Vitt. Running all the way, spins away from a tackle. Another good gain on first down, this for six. Again, anything four or better for me, David, on first down is a win for the offense because then it allows you to open the playbook up and run, pass, or even go play action. Here, I think a good opportunity for the Bobcats. True freshman Javen Banks, one of four wideouts. It's at the bottom of your screen. Vitt scrambling away from pressure. He'll heave it to the sideline and out of bounds. That's what App State will do coming in with 23 sacks on the season. Yeah, good pressure. However, there was a little check down near side to us that if you'd have got the ball to. And as a running back, I always would look at my quarterback and say, you can dump it to me. I'll run 30 more yards. It's just as good as that pretty 25-yard pass and, and a five-yard run after the catch. We'll do it for you, but you got to get it to us out there in the flat on he the did. edge. Yep, he did have Anthony D. Taylor open. Twyford now back in and in motion, third down and four. App State just brings three. Pass tipped, almost caught. Intended for Brown, Anthony Flory, first uh, preseason, first team all-conference player. Senior from Miramar, Florida, was able to tip it away and set up fourth. Yeah, and again, if you're a defensive lineman and you can't get to the quarterback, what they say is try to get the hands up in the passing lanes and see if you can create a deflection, knock the ball down. And sometimes you have real athletic defenders that can intercept that ball. Senior defensive end, Ocon Godwin with the tip of the line. Clayton Stewart averaging 37 yards a punt. 
App State with six blocked kicks this season. They don't come after this one. Win holds this up, and the man deep for the Bobcats did not see that coming. As it's a touchback, and the Mountaineers will have it at their own 20. First down, Appalachian State. If you're Texas State going up against this App State defense, allowing just 285 total yards a game, you put up 75 yards your first two drives. Really needed to get some points. First drive being an ending in a turnover, and the second drive ending with the punt, but in App State territory. That's what usually makes the difference. Not the fact that you can move the ball between the 20s, but can you get points on the scoreboard? Just took three plays for the Mountaineers to go 67 yards their first time out. Zach Thomas, eight-yard touchdown pass to Dominique Heath. First carry for Darrington Evans, shoved back, but the sophomore from Oak Hill, Florida, will gain one. He's been tremendous, almost 650 yards on the ground this season, and taking the place of all-conference star Jalen Moore, who suffered a terrible ankle injury, ending his career. Leading rusher in the Sun Belt, Jalen Moore was last season, but this App State offense has barely missed a beat now with Evans in the backfield. Thomas is crunched. Frankie Griffin with the sack. Emphatically his second sack of the year. Yeah, that was a great job right up the front. And the front door was wide open for the weak side linebacker. And he did his job, you know, because so many times now with the safety element of this game, you don't want to hit a quarterback in the wrong way or in the wrong place. But right there, if you just run right through him and that front door was wide open, you'll get a tremendous play out of your defense. Coming in, App State passed the ball just over 30% of the time. But third and 14 here. Up the middle, incomplete, as Thomas zips it behind Evans. I tell you, the umpire may have played the 12th man for the Bobcats. As he was getting out of the way, the pattern came right like behind the umpire. And so I think Thomas was wondering, where can I fit the ball in? And the umpire actually acted like uh, a deep dropping linebacker in the coverage. And uh, so the ball was harmlessly uh, thrown to the turf. Hutch White back deep for Texas State. Top 20 in the nation in punt returns. Just under 11 yards of punt return. You see White there. Clayton Howell is the punter for the Mountaineers. Redshirt freshman from High Point, North Carolina. At 43 yards a punt. Two in the play clock. I let it go down to zero. Delay a game. Offense. And the, and the interesting Five thing here, delay. you know, Fourth down. when you have 100 yards that you can kick the ball, backing up five yards where your punter is in the end zone, maybe your punt team now has to, you know, maybe concern themselves with a punt block opportunity by the Bobcats, and it makes your punter a little bit nervous or a bad snap can create a safety. There's a slight wind at the back of Howell, but not very strong. Just got some good leg under it. White calls fair catch. And for the third time, Texas State will have the football in Appalachian State territory. They'll begin the drive, and we return from the Mountaineer 47. Our first quarter brought to you by Aqua Brewing, artisanal cuisine, craft beer, community feel, live music, and San Marcos roots. So we're being told that on the play which led to Willie Jones fumbling the football for Texas State, that he got injured on the play. I see him walking back and forth along the, or on the sideline, but Tyler Vitt in for Jones, and not sure how long he'll be in. Twyford on the sweep to the outside. Yet another good first down gain for this Texas State offense, close to six. Yes, and coming near side does. I love the way that Twyford made his way around the blocks, kept working, and I call it the sideline express because you want to make things a foot race, David, and you still can pick up great yardage, seven yards on that carry. Vit. Time in the pocket, and now room to run. Faking the slide, and you see that more and more in the game of college football. Gives him a few more yards to the 33. 
I might have been a lot younger, but I remember when Dan Moreno faked to the spike and threw the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. So he started all this mess, and it works to a T if you use it at the right time. After this play, we'll go down to Brooke Shoemaker for an update on Willie Jones. Hand off to Twyford on first down, and this time the Here Mountaineers are there limiting the gain to one. Brooke, you have a good look at Willie Jones on the sideline. Yeah, David, I see him walking around down here. He's got ice on his left shoulder. Looks like he has it kind of hanging in a little bit of a sling, taking the pressure off of it. Okay, Brooke, thank you. And so Jones, a significant injury for Texas State. And let's hope Anthony Flory is okay. Does not look good as the preseason all-conference linebacker remains on the turf. Senior from Miramar, Florida. Second this season in tackles for the Mountaineers. Came in with 167 in his career. Part of the best defense in all of the Sun Belt. We'll take a break. Welcome back to San Marcos. Good news for App State. Anthony Flory walking off the field on his own power. Texas State with its second and nine from the Mountaineer 32. Vit trouble and able to try to release it to Twyfer. That should not be a flag, but oh, in his face right away as the senior nose tackle, Myquan Stout. 6'1, 280, and he definitely brings a wallop on against any quarterback, David, but a good heads up play by Vit to get the ball towards his running back. That was uh, that outlet receiver to his right, far side, and not taking a sack or an intentional grounding. Remember, the Bobcats are going against a slight breeze, and their field goal unit has struggled mightily. Last field goal was September 15th, and so you can't say they're in field goal range here. They hand the ball off to Twyford on third and five, and just a yard on that carry. And now let's see whatever Weathers decides to do on fourth and eight from the 31. I tell you, the outside linebackers are very active, and they're supposed to be the tackling machines for a defense. And they just closed quickly because that was a good play call and there was room to run. But, you know, it looks like they're going for it here on fourth down. It, it's no man's land, effectively. And uh, maybe Vic can keep it going. And it makes sense. The Bobcats have missed their last five field goal attempts. And, again, it goes all the way back to September 15th, the last time they connected on a field goal and a loss to South Alabama. They need the 23. Vitt head as he throws and almost intercepted. Intended for Javen Banks, the free safety Desmond Franklin was there, and the Bobcats have turned the ball over on down. It's a good choice, but a lot of pressure, and Vitt didn't get a chance to really step into the ball. If he puts some more zip on it, again, it's a long throw across the field and dropping it over the first defender and before the second. That's a pretty good pass, given all things considered with the pressure from App State. App State getting on the board early after a Willie Jones turnover and a play in which he was injured. Zach Thomas, three consecutive completions for 67 yards, including an eight-yard touchdown to Dominique Keith. That's the scoring so far. Swings it out here to the true freshman Henry Pearson from Hohokus, New Jersey. His first catch of the season goes for short yardage. Man, and I've been all over New Jersey. My mom is from there. I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to look that up, but Mr. Google is going to have to help Steve-O out on that one. I've never heard of that town. Maybe it's a village. <laughs> Gain of close to five. Plenty of time as Thomas rolls out and throws it too high for the sophomore wideout, Jalen Virgil. And there's where you see a little rust on Zach Thomas missing a couple weeks. And he had a receiver. And that second level, you know, I love that 8 to 15 yard pass right there. That could have been set up. Now, he's running, rolling away from, from us, and he's going opposite of his natural uh, throwing motion, but still an opportunity to make a pitch and catch. Now let's see who this flag is on. Frankie Griffin was storming towards the line and it forced the right tackle Chandler Greer to move. I I'm torn here. Typ <laughs> typically this is on the defense, but our crew is gonna talk it over. And I think you're right. Offside, Dave. defense. Number 18, jump in the neutral zone, cross the offense to move. Five yard penalty. Down. That's the rule. If you're charging like that, even and ever withers is going to disagree, of course. But if that forces the movement on the line, then typically that call goes against the D. 
Yeah, and as a former offensive player, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the team that it was called. <laughs> That's why I was torn. It is still third down, but now third and about a foot. The fake to Evans. Thomas keeps it. An excellent runner. First down past midfield. A great decision. The choice. You sell the ball, get, getting handed off into the line of scrimmage, and then you just find the running lane that's between that tackle and then where the tight end normally would be, and a great run, but a great open field tackle as well. Coming in, Thomas, 281 yards rushing and six rushing touchdowns, including two of over 50 yards. Keeping it here and crunched, Frankie Griffin's had himself a whale of a first quarter. Senior from Spring, Texas was there, in addition to Ishmael Davis, the graduate defensive end. And that one hurt a little bit. <laughs> Zach Thomas put his hands on his hips. He's like, hey, uh, maybe I shouldn't do that too often. And that's what I tell quarterbacks. That's why you have guys like me that you can hand the ball off to. We're used to that. Second down and eight. We're only trying to help his running backs. Second carry for Evans. Good lunge gets him an extra yard or two. It'll be third and four. Always that good running lean and again square those shoulder pads when you're about to take the, the hit because you can actually, it's a physics problem, David. When you can administer the blow, they absorb all of the force. Clifton Lewis Jr. made the tackle who's taken the place of Brian London at inside linebacker. Lewis usually starts on the strong side. Third down. Blitz. Thomas scrambles. Needs the 36. He has it. Diving forward past the 35. A third down conversion again. Well, good plays both offensively and defensive. Defense, the coverage was there in the secondary, but the defensive line could not get to Thomas. And Thomas wisely tucks the ball and runs, finds enough to get the first down and move the chains. It is something when you look at this App State offense, averaging 38 a game, best in the Sun Belt. Thomas a sophomore, Evans a sophomore. Their top receivers are all sophomores. They control their own destiny for a spot in the Sun Belt title game after Troy defeated Georgia Southern earlier today. This time, Thomas going for it to Virgil and good coverage downfield, Anthony J. Taylor, the junior. Yes, and that's where you want to be, right in that hip pocket because, again, you don't want uh, a play to be decided by the guys that wear black and white. And uh, then exactly at the right moment, that's a free ball for anyone, and then you want to make uh, your attempt at the highest point to see if you can either knock it away, grab it, or make a good uh, decision not to grab or touch for a pass interference call. Thomas, four of seven passing, 72 yards, and a touchdown on the Mountaineers' first drive. First carry for big Marcus Williams, Jr., another one of their great sophomores on offense from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, averaging five yards a carry, but only getting one there. Great pursuit on the right side of the Bobcat defensive line, and then you uh, have a linebacker that reads run, and then that's when you fill the gap, and that's what you see. Frankie Griffin was the first one there again. Can Somebody watch some film. Can App State convert another third? And a little defensive mix-up in the secondary by the Bobcats, but it seems like they got it corrected. Bobcats bring three. Thomas swings it out. Williams held up. Teammates will come after him. He's well shy of the first down. Alvin Pacheco, the junior corner from Allentown, Pennsylvania, was there first. Yeah, and you know what? That was a great technique played by the corner. One, you force the runner inside after the catch, and then you go to the waist. Don't go up high because that's where running backs want you to go. We can shake you off. But go in that midsection that's unprotected and wait for the rest of your team. Chandler Staten's long field goal this season is 40. And this is out of that range, so App State goes for it. Plenty of time. And on the drag route, Corey Sutton. First and goal. Great play call. I love the crossing patterns because, again, they give you so much of an opportunity when you run away from a defender and you have two crossing patterns. That, that's the classic move because <laughs> it's the crisscross. And uh, you can see what happens when it works well. 
Jerron Morris finally made the stop. Two third down conversions in that big fourth down conversion for App State. Looking to go up two scores from the six. Williams. Gain of a couple. Chandler Greer, the right tackle, lost his helmet. He'll need to come out before the second down play. And the alternative is to call a timeout, and then that allows your player to remain in because you do take the timeout. But I think right here you're going to have the substitution. They move Cole Garrison to right tackle, and Bear Hunter, big sophomore from Clemens, North Carolina, comes in at right guard. Bear Hunter. Now, Bear is not his real first name. His first name is John, but his grandmother called him Bear just before he passed away. Spells it B-A-E-R, part of this physical offensive front for App State. But there were many times where Texas State had the momentum. Three times in Mountaineer territory, no points. And now when we come back, the defense will look to avoid going down two scores. Our second quarter brought to you by ARP Roofing and Remodeling. David Solzman, Steve Foster, Brooke Shoemaker with you from Bobcat Stadium, San Marcos, Texas. Despite 92 yards in the first quarter, three trips to Mountaineer territory, no points for the Bobcats, and down seven, nothing. Looking to stop App State on second and goal. Ball just inside the five. Mountaineers with 125 total yards. And although it's mostly a run-oriented team, Zach Thomas, six of nine passing for 98 yards and a touchdown. A flip to Virgil on second down and brought down from behind to prevent the touchdown. Clifton Lewis saving six, but third and goal from about the one. Well, that looks like a pitch, which it is, but it's a pass. This is forward. It's the shuffle pass, and that's a four-yard gain by pass, so he's still passing. <laughs> that's the play which gave them their touchdown on their first drive. And or rather before the eight yard touchdown throw to Dominique Heath. Little pitch pass gave Heath 16. Zach but Thomas now, Dave, has a lot of options here because he can run and uh, the decision making is gonna be the key for the quarterback on this instance. Heavy backfield, Marcus Williams Jr. the tailback. The fake to Williams and Thomas wide open, Colin Reed, touchdown. touchdown. You've said it, Steve, it's that type of misdirection that has given the Bobcats fits multiple times so far. Yeah, it's football judo. You use your momentum in that upfield rush that you want to get to the ball so badly against a defense. And with the choices made by Zach Thomas so far wisely, he is moving the ball and getting it into that painted 10-yard area called the end zone. An App State team which took Penn State to overtime in the season opener. Their only loss at Georgia Southern, game which saw Zach Thomas be knocked out early with a concussion. Showing why they are one of the best in the Sun Belt, if not the best. They'll have a chance. If they win out, they'll make it to the Sun Belt title game. Texas State football powered by the new 2019 Ram 1500 built to serve. Bobcats without their injured starting quarterback now down two scores. Two big third down conversions and a fourth down conversion on that scoring drive for App State. 13 plays, 70 yards, took 6.01 off the clock. And Zach Thomas, 13th touchdown pass of the season. Just one yard finding Colin Reed. Early in the second quarter. You just can't afford to get down too much against this App State squad. Best in the Sun Belt, allowing just 17 points a game and just 285 yards contest coming in. No, and Bobcats have played well, but the turnover was a complimentary six. It'll be Jonathan Haydell on the return from inside the five. Burst of speed, blockers in front of him. Haydell looking to beat the kicker, Rubino, who slows him down enough. But again, four for four now. The Bobcat offense is going to have the football in Mountaineer territory. They'll start this drive at the 48. Well, this team is playing much better. We mentioned a two-game win streak against New Mexico State and Georgia State. And they're at home, and they're playing valiantly, but they got to score. Update on the quarterback situation. Let's go down to Brooke. 
It's been confirmed that Willie Jones will not return to this game. At the end of the first quarter, he still had his pads on, was still icing his shoulder, and it was still in that sling, but he made his way into the locker room and haven't seen him come back out to the field since, guys. All right, thank you. Jones had 37 total yards on the opening drive before fumbling the football and hurting his shoulder. So Tyler Vitt in for what we assume will be the rest of the way. Short hitch to Keenan Brown, gains about five. Good play call in there on first down. Get it to your 250-pound nimble <laughs> offensive weapon, and he can attack that defense. Keenan Brown, top nine in the Sun Belt in receptions a game and receiving yards a game. What a find, the grad transfer from Oklahoma State. Twite for the tailback, Vitt fakes to him, and the pass tipped away. There was some grappling, but no flag. Mason Hayes, the intended target, and a good job on the pass deflection from number 17, Tay Hayes. Yeah, and Hayes did a great job, again, just settling down, looking to see if the pass was coming towards the man he was covering. And when uh, the ball arrives, knock it away, maybe make a play on it. But listen, as long as there's an incompletion, that's a win for the defense. Texas State 2 of 4 on thirds. First down marker at the App State 38. Part of the reason for their two straight wins, converting 40% of their third downs in those victories over New Mexico State and Georgia State. Trouble. Vid in trouble, no chance. Sack all the way back to Texas State's 46-yard line. Ocon Godwin also already with a pass deflection with the sack for Appalachian State. Yeah, and that was a great devised uh, blitz but it was delayed and then it comes off this near side corner and when you're on block like that and you're attacking a, <laughs> a smaller uh, new quarterback that probably was not ready uh, mentally to see that blitz in his face uh, it's a win for the defense Clifton Duck is back for App State who has a 62 yard punt return for a touchdown this season it's one of the best special teams units in all of college football Clayton Stewart with the punt bouncing towards the end zone, and for the second time, Texas State was close, but unable to pin App State deep. So the Mountaineers already up two scores. We'll have it from their own 20 when we return. David Salzman, Steve Foster, Brooke Shoemaker from San Marcos, Texas. A 14-0 Appalachian State lead. And from the 20, Zach Thomas is at a whale of a first half so far. That ball is loose. It's ruled a catch. Texas State thinks they have the football. That ball bounces so funny. Did the ball stay inbounds, and then they're going to give it a well, reception? Josh Newman had the football in his hands. Corey Sutton with the grab. You would have to assume this will be reviewed if it is ruled a catch and fumble. Our crew is still discussing it. It wasn't that much of a bang-bang play, David. It looked like a catch, and then they ran into the defense, and then the ball came out. Who possessed it before it went out of bounds? Jeremy Parker, a referee. The ruling is a fumble on the field. However, Texas State was touching the ball while being out of bounds. The play is under further review. And so if the Bobcats touched it while out of bounds, then, of course, this will remain App State football. You got to get real oh, oh, but it goes out. Uh, so they're showing the replay on the big video board here at Bobcat Stadium, and I think this will be App State football because Josh Newman had it in his arms for a moment while inbounds and then squirted it loose, and as he touched it for a second time, it looked like his forearm was out. Well, we'll try to get another look at it here for you on air. Well, defense wins championships, but the reason why a lot of guys play defense in the secondary is because they aren't good with that funny shaped ball. You know, we talk to it. We keep it in bounds. <laughs> we, want it. we only want to throw it out of bounds when they knock us out of bounds. That's a tough call, but it was ruled a fumble, which is good, but the problem may be possession. So we're told that our replay machine in the truck is down, not in house, which is why us and all the fans here were, were able to see it. They just showed it once on the big video board. And again, it looked like if Newman holds on to that initially, it's Texas State ball. Again, we only had one look at it, but it looked like that he touched it a second time with his forearm out of bounds. Yeah. Everett Withers hoping this goes his way. Head coach of Texas State, a graduate of Appalachian State. Graduated 1984. 
part of an App State team that ended a 10-year losing streak against what was their arch rival in Furman right. just back in the day where, of course, App State was a, a 1AA team. And in fact, 1983, the coach at Appalachian State, Mac Brown, his first ever head coaching job at the age of 32. He asked Everett Withers about Mac Brown, and he said, you talk about a mentor in the profession. He is it for me. The reason I got into coaching, says he and Mac Brown text each other every couple of weeks. And still very, very close. Not just Mac, but his wife Sally as well. Everett Withers saying, they've been like parents to me for many a year. It's important. Everybody needs a support group or... Well, while out of bounds. Therefore, the ball will go back to the forward fumble spot and be placed at the 21-yard line. Please put 12:37 on the clock. It will be second down, Appalachian State. Listen, the effort's there. Now the conversion needs to occur. And takeaways and also getting the ball into the end zone, David, because Texas State has played very inspired to, up to this point. It's the ball at the 21, a short gain on first down, second and nine now for Zach Thomas. There's nine to 12 passing, he'll throw again. Virgil the catch, and with a flag down, Virgil has first down yardage, but we'll see what the flag's all about. Not sure, because again, <laughs> that, that penalty comes from an interesting position. Is it offensive, or is it, you know, on the block after the catch? Just saw the flag on your screen, which is on the far side of the field. I don't think it's defensive. But as soon as I say that, <laughs> officiating crews love to make me wrong. Just the third penalty call the total this game. Pass interference. Offense. Blocking downfield when the ball is across the line of scrimmage. 15-yard previous spot. Second down. That's a break the Bobcats needed down two scores. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, uh, the foul will be half the distance to the goal. The, with the 15 yard penalty from the 21, you can't take all 15 yards to the six. You gotta average it out and get to about the 11. And that's what they do. First down, close to 20. Early second quarter, Zach Thomas. First action since being knocked out with a concussion early in App State's loss October 25th at Georgia Southern. Has been brilliant. Nine to 12 passing for 103 yards, two scores. 19 yards on the ground to lead App State. Perhaps a bit of a surprise how much more they have passed than run so far, and it has had success. Dominic Heath, some shiftiness to get past the 20-yard line. Yeah, pretty good move there, and there was opportunity to make a tackle for a shorter gain, but a good shifty move, as you mentioned, by Heath. But it's still third down and nine. Got right inside Nicholas Daniels to get a few extra yards. Bobcats just bring three, plenty of space as they swing it out to Darrington Evans, seventh catch of the year for short yardage. When the defense stays home, you can cover the deep guys, stay over top, and then Thomas, all he could do was drop down to a, a check down in the flats far side, and then a good recovery in the secondary, and you see Frankie Griffin come up, the senior, he knows what to do. Get that, you don't have to tackle him, just push him out of bounds. That stops forward progress. Everyone was back at that first down marker, happy to let Evans catch it for short yards. Wins picked up and is going against App State in the second quarter here. How about a bad snap? <laughs> Clayton Hell, second punt. Good snap. Wins gonna hold this up. Hutch White calls fair catch and he bumped into an Appalachian State player looking around for a hanky. None well, coming, and App State saying White no. touched the ball, which I do not think occurred. Ball simply down to the 42. Yeah, but again, so many times you see kick coverage interference, and right here. Well, he hits his own, close to his own player. and I'll tell you the best thing Rogers. was that the punt returner got out of the way because you don't want a decision that the ball hits you on the foot and then it's recovered by App State. Pretty good field position again, David, here at the 42-yard line. Well, first four drives, Bobcats have been in App State territory. No points to show for it. They have it at the 42. Tyler Vitt in place of the injured Willie Jones who hurt his shoulder on the Bobcats' first drive. Jones fumbled the ball 
on the play in which he was injured. Vitt, three of eight passing 19 yards. Watts makes the first man miss. This was allowed, this will allow Watts to get pretty good yardage and a flag. This will be on App State for throwing Watts after he was already out. Yeah, and if you're intending to go out of bounds and it's pretty obvious that you can't go anywhere else to make uh, an affirmative move of trying to throw somebody down or, or do that, that comes into that uh, safety aspect, and there you see a penalty. After the play, personal foul, defense, number 59, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's on the reigning Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Week, Jordan Fair had three sacks in the win at Coastal Carolina one week ago. Didn't do much, but holding on to a guy just 5'8", 165, can't pull him back. Well, no, it looked like the, the last little movement of the sling when you're out of bounds on that white, thick, out of bounds on the sideline will do it every time. Anthony D. Taylor. Gain of four. Anthony Taylor on Ten the yards game. away from the red zone and a good gain on first down. David can open up this offense. And, and Vitt not afraid to go after App State, but they bring pressure at the right times. That stalled some drives. Another handoff. Falling forward for a couple. Taylor again. That could have been a situation where Vitt, maybe if he keeps and lures the defense into the line, he might have been able to get the edge. Noel Cook, outside linebacker, has been busy in this first half. Junior from Reedsville, North Carolina, on the stop. And he made a good defensive play by playing assignment football on the edge. He really cut off Vitt's opportunity to some degree to go wide, so then Vitt wisely hands the ball off, and then he comes down and makes the tackle inside. An empty set for the true freshman, Vitt. Brown to the outside and using his strength. That is a man 6'3", 250, and he shows there why he's getting NFL looks. Oh, absolutely. Nimble at 250, and you didn't even need a stiff arm. That being Brown, number six coming near side to us, and he actually has a, a lot of good foot speed to get around the corner, David, and pick up the first. Bobcats now three of six on thirds. Hits to White. Cutting it inside. Bobcats have done a good job making the first man miss today. That's tough to do against the best D in the Sun Belt. Good gain here. That's that's on you. As the person that either rushes or receives the ball, the first man is yours. You have to make them miss. Junior from Kerrville, Texas, his first catch. He's able to gain six yards. Vitt, pump fakes. To the end zone, Hutch White was thrown down, flag is down. They'll get the strong safety, Josh Thomas. And it was in the end zone, so that's going to move the ball. But listen, that's a great defensive penalty because if not, that's a touchdown right at the A of Texas State in the south end zone. And it's in the end zone. Pass so interference. Defense. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Yeah, and that's it. But again... If you're the defense, you don't give up points, but a great move. But the best thing was is that Vitt bought time in the pocket enough to get the ball to his receiver so that the penalty was created in the end zone, David. So from the two, can the Bobcats finally cash in? We're going to say yes, <laughs> but well, how? This App State defense just allowing 17 a game. Bunch set Vitt under center. And flag down. This is going to be a false start with all the motion by Texas State on first and goal. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. First down. Your skill players can move. Your left guard, Jalen Mamorell, cannot. He's called for the five-yard penalty. That's a little anxiety because I bet he wanted to fire out and get his body onto a defender so that they could push that App State defensive line back into the end zone, but that flinch, as you mentioned, cost five yards. Anthony D. Taylor, touchdowns in each of the last three weeks is the tailback. Vitt, Brown, trying to cut it inside. Boy, physical on physical there, gain of a couple. Desmond Franklin on the stop. Not a bad choice, but it's to the short side of the field, so... He, 
the defense is packed in there, and so they don't have to run a, a long way to get to Brown. Haydell in motion. He'll get the pitch, looking to turn the corner. Squeezes through for a yard, maybe two. It's third down. Jeremiah Haydell on the carry. A little patience there, picked up a couple, but not enough to get in the end zone. It's worked against the Bobcats, so they tried against the Mountaineers. That's the question for Brett Elliott, the quarterback coach who calls plays for the Bobcats. You try to go outside against this App State team who's so good side to side. You try to go between the tackles, and you have maybe the best defensive front in the league. Third and goal. Well, you got to hold your blocks here, David. Twyford the tailback. Brown is at halfback. Play clock down to six. Some uncertainty here. Vit the snap. Trouble. Vit. Oh, he's it up in the air. Poor decision. Intercepted. True freshman just trying to do too much. Noel Cook with the pick. Just take the sack. Even if you get three there, take the sack. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's okay if you lose yardage. It's not okay if you lose the ball and turn it over. You can always go and kick a field goal or even go for it on fourth down. At the time you're in jail, you just cannot launch the ball towards your goal line. You knew it too when he released the football that it was trouble. Would have been at least a short field goal attempt. Instead, this is incredible. They are 0 for 5, the Bobcats, just putting points on the board with all their drives in Mountaineer territory. Silver lighting is Bobcats have the Mountaineers pinned at their own five. If you take away the 21 points that Texas State allowed in the fourth in their win to Georgia State last week, and the game was, was already not in doubt, the Texas State team coming in, giving up about 18 points a game, but they've been playing App State-like defense coming in, although the Mountaineers with two touchdowns here in the first half. You're right, and this defensive line has been very good against a solid offense. Catch made. It's just shy of the first down. First time we've called Thomas Hennigan's name. He's a good one, sophomore wideout from Greensboro, North Carolina, his 19th catch of the year. Good size, too. 6'1", 206. But this is where you would have liked possibly Willie Jones, who when he run, runs out, he scrambles. He's a bigger guy, and he knows how to pick up some yards, maybe diving for the pylon. It's Bobcat defense in the first half without their all-conference linebacker, Brian London, targeting calls second half of the win at Georgia State last week. Looking for the third down stop here. Quick throw in the slant, good hands to haul it in, in traffic. That's enough for the first, for the sophomore wideout, Malik Williams. That's a lot of confidence on that pass there. Zach Thomas threading the needle. And you know, when you're up by two scores and you do a, a lot for your team, you feel comfortable enough to make that throw. And uh, that throws the difference than getting spun around and launching a, <laughs> a, a, a desperation pass. Right there, a good choice by Thomas. Thomas has been terrific. He has completed his last nine. He's 13 of 16. Now his last 10. Hennigan, gain of about five. Good coverage there. I mean, if you're going to run a quick slant, and that's all you get is a catch and an immediate that's tackle, five, you can't Thompson. complain for the coverage. But again, it's the execution of the route that gets the yards. 162 yards of offense for App State, 117 for the Bobcats. Williams, close to the first down marker. He may have it on second down. Nico Ezador, true freshman nose tackle on the stop for Texas State. Yeah, and it is a first down. But listen, one thing that will really energize this Texas State Bobcat team, especially on the defensive side of the ball, is if you can get some points because then that just provides confidence for that defense who's played valiantly up to this point. Mountaineers chewing up clock so far in this drive, and they'll get the ball first to begin the second half. Williams stacked up. 
no gain on first down. Bobcats doing a great job at the point of attack. Not a lot of running room. Again, Zach Thomas has been the difference. He definitely, with the ball in his hands, makes the App State offense what it is. And they're up by two scores, but one was kind of complimentary, David. Yeah, head coach Scott Satterfield told us earlier this week, we're going to try to force that running game. Well, so far today, 10 runs, 17 passes for Thomas. And again, he's completed his last 10. He'll throw one second and 10 with time. Scrambling up the middle, now trying to get to the edge and does. First down, gain of 16 for the App State quarterback. Well, that's the difference right there. Comfortable enough to pull the ball down and know that you can get a lot of positive yards. You saw that in Willie Jones prior to him getting hurt. He could make that same type of play, both sophomores and both full of confidence. Let's go down to the field and Brooke. Yeah, guys, quarterback Zach Thomas obviously back to his normal self after missing, uh, suffering a concussion against Georgia State. Well, earlier this week when we talked with Coach Satterfield, he said that Thomas adds another dynamic to this defense with, with his ability to run the football, as you've seen this entire game, as well as being a very accurate passer. Satterfield also thinks he has all the tools to grow into an all-conference player. Guys? Thank you. He's had an all-conference performance. It was first start of his career at Penn State, 313 total yards, three touchdowns. And then the next week, perfect in a win at Charlotte, 14 of 14 for 295 and three scores. Yeah, you can't argue with that. And, you know, <laughs> good quarterbacks are hard to find. They're, they're, they're the reason why offenses really work. You can substitute in running backs. You can substitute in wide receivers. But a, a great quarterback and one that really has a good feel for the game is hard to find. Just a sophomore. Just about every skill player we've called today is a sophomore for App State. Thomas, good coverage downfield, flushed out of the pocket, and again, we'll make something out of nothing here. Down at the Texas State 46, gain of four. And again, very good upfront pressure by the Bobcats, but there was a breakdown on containment on the far side, on the left side of the defensive line, just enough to get Zach Thomas to the edge, and he makes something out of nothing. This drive has taken five minutes. Bobcats looking for the stop on third and six. It truly, any type of score from Texas State would really help the enthusiasm already existing by the defense. Bobcats bring three and again on the drag route, another catch. But they've done that, what, three times and all with success. This time it's the sophomore, Jalen Virgil. I scream for the crossing patterns. They are just so hard to cover. Because if it's zone, you just find them when uh, you get uh, left from one guy to the next. Or if you can just get a head start on the defender in man coverage, you're always in front. And you just throw a pass that leads that receiver, and he can make the adjustment on the run. 20 yards on the completion. Thomas lofting it to the corner, incomplete. His first incompletion in his last dozen, looking for Sutton with the true freshman Morris in coverage. Yeah, and that's at the end of it. Right there, I the eye taking the trying to turn up the defender in a great play in the secondary. Yeah, it looked like Morris got his hand in there as Sutton turned as well. Just a true freshman who defensive coordinator Chris Wood says has been very proud of his play coming in. 34 tackles. Great recovery. Thomas lobbing it up the seam. Catch made. Down just shy of the goal line. That is Evans from the backfield. Yeah, and even though there wasn't a score, what you really want is to catch. Because now you have four downs to get three feet. And it was a good choice by Zach Thomas again. And that running back just goes right up the seam out of the backfield. It wasn't a circle route because it was all the way downfield. It was that seam route. Evans, touchdown. His 25-yard reception sets up his one-yard touchdown run. His sixth total touchdown of the year. 20 to nothing. Well, this defense was trying to bend and not break, but such a good offensive set 
from App State and the Mountaineers take advantage and a one yard run. Did that take the air out of this crowd? Five minute, 51 second drive, 95 yards off the ill advised Tyler Vitt interception. Now 14 App State points off of the two Texas State turnovers. 21 nothing. Mountaineers showing why they're one of the best in the Sun Belt. Our second quarter brought to you by ARP Roofing and Remodeling. How about this for App State's three touchdown drives? 67 yards, 70 yards, then a 13 play, 95 yard drive. Made worse if you're a Bobcat fan by the fact App State will get the ball to begin the second half. Texas State does have all three timeouts left, but just 120 to go until halftime. It is Alvin Pacheco on the return. He'll take it past the Texas State 30. And unfortunate for Alvin is he ran into his own man who was trying to administer a block for him on the return, or he may have gotten past the 35. Gave Markevian Coleman a lick, his teammate. Now, Tyler Vitt would love to have his last pass back. Instead, he and the Texas State offense with it first in 10. Hits to Tyler Watts, slips down for a loss, trying to cut inside. Pass complete to Tyler Watts. And as well as you've seen some first down plays go for good yardage, after a while the defense may figure that out. <laughs> and they do run well to the ball. So it doesn't give that quick receiver a chance to make a move and get upfield with all that pursuit coming at him. Number 24, Akeem Davis Gaither, junior linebacker, one of the Mountaineers there who leads the team in tackles. Texas State in no hurry here. App State happy to let the clock run. And the handoff to Twyford. Runs into Haydell trying to cut it outside, and the Mountaineers will finish him off. Gain to three. And a good pursuit by the Mountaineers. But right now, you know, you just want to protect the ball. And uh, you may be content to try to regroup and figure out how you can convert with all these opportunities on your opponent's side of the 50. Well, first half theme for Everett Weathers is what might have been. Five times Bobcats have the ball in App State territory. The Mountaineers show why, and this is Everett Withers' words, while well, the Mountaineers are the standard of the Sunbelt Conference. Four and one in the league, six and two overall, and a 21-0 edge on Texas State behind 238 total yards. Texas State football powered by the new 2019 Ram 1500 built to serve. 21-0 our halftime score. Coming up, Brooke Shoemaker will talk to Texas State head baseball coach Ty Harrington. And before we start the second half, Steve and I will have our thoughts on the first half of that show. All App State on the road looking for their seventh one of the year. Guys, guys down here with baseball coach, Coach Ty Harrington. Coach, the 2019 schedule was just released. What went into scheduling those three non-conference tournaments before the season? Well, you know, it, our, our, our fan base has kind of come accustomed to having a great schedule, and it's kind of a good-bad thing. Sometimes you can over-schedule because of the expectations and what your players and, and uh, the alumni and, and really kind of what you want to do. And so it's a great schedule. It's a tough one. And uh, it'll be the first time we've been in uh, Houston in uh, Minute Maid Tournament, and so we're excited about all that. And um, we're, we're ex not going to tell you we're ready yet for the season because we're just finishing up our fall, but uh, we're certainly excited about looking at the, at the schedule and getting ready for it. What conference matchups are you looking forward to the most? Well, they're all good. It's not, the one thing we learned about the Sun Belt is when we got into it is resourcefully a really good conference. They don't mess around. And uh, now you have a national champion in it, right, with Coastal Carolina. Uh, so it makes it exciting. So it, all of them are good. Lafayette and Coastal and, and South Isle have been some of the top ones and Troy. So uh, our hands are full every year in the conference. It, it really is an exciting and fun. All of them have great crowds, great facilities, uh, and it, it truly is a great baseball conference. Bobcat Stadium just had some renovations of its own. How are you enjoying the new turf? I'll tell you what, I wish we were over to go show it on TV right now. It's, it's been unbelievable. Uh, I walk out there truly 
because I've been here long enough now when we didn't have much. And so when I walk out there now and I look at it, every once in a while it kind of mesmerizes me and I have to take a step back because it is truly beautiful. The administration has done some unbelievable things. They did it over in basketball too with the renovations, but the baseball stadium looks unbelievable. Coach, who are some of the returning players who are going to make a difference on the field this year? You know, it, we feel like our strength is going to be on the mound. Nick Fraze and Zach Lee and Connor Reich were all three starters for us last year. Uh, Braden Terrio was a reliever, closer, and Pagano. So our, we feel like that's probably going to be a strength for us. Um, we returned Jalen Hubbard, who was a, a fifth year or a, a, a senior for us. And so it, we're replacing. The, our middle infield for the very first time in three years, which is unusual and tough on us, uh, but we're certainly excited. I think we are going to pitch really well. Coach, and are there any newcomers we can look forward to? Yeah, you know what? It, there's a lot of new freshmen that just came in, and then you start naming all of them. You miss one and one, you know, and you don't leave anybody out. But I will tell you, our outfield will be brand new for us. Um, we've got some guys that played for us in the past and that are, that are going to be good and some new guys that have moved in and some new guys on the mound, some junior college kids that just got in here too that I'm, I'm excited about. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Good luck this season. You got it. Thank you. Guys, we'll be right back after this. Chilly November afternoon. Welcome back to San Marcos. Texas State halftime brought to you by RV Outlet Mall, which brings you family fun. David Salzman, Steve Foster with you. A 21 0 lead for the visitors in App State. Looking to go 5 and 1 in the Sun Belt. Texas State got the ball first, and they were looking great until Willie Jones loses the football, hurts his shoulder in the process. App State would recover, and on their first drive, three plays, 67 yards. Dominic Heath, an eight-yard touchdown reception. Yeah, great play selection there, and a great choice by Zach Thomas as he gets the first touchdown off of that fumble, David. And then we come back, and we see Zach Thomas again in 12, getting the ball downfield to the one, and... After Evans makes a great catch, the decision now to hand the ball right up the A-gap on the left side, 21-0. And that was after a Tyler Vitt interception. App State took over at its own five, 13-play, 95-yard drive, and took the wind out of the sails of the fans here at Bobcat Stadium. It's this App State team only giving up 17 points a game, up 21-0 at the break over Texas State. Our halftime report brought to you by RV Outlet Mall, bringing you family fun. Second half to come when we return. Texas State football powered by the new 2019 Ram 1500, built to serve. David Salzman, Steve Foster, our sideline reporter, Brooke Shoemaker, our spotter, Ben Goins, Corey Wiesland, our producer, and our entire crew welcome you back to Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos. Texas State down 21-0, and App State will get the ball to begin the second half. 238 total yards for the Mountaineers, and Zach Thomas was brilliant. 16-20 to passing for the sophomore quarterback for 184 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Add to that 40 rushing yards for Thomas, 224 all-purpose yards. On the return, this is Hennigan for App State. And bottled up just past the 20-yard line. That's where the Mountaineers will start as the third quarter is underway. And a good coverage by the kickoff team by Texas State, David. You know, sometimes... You can just go ahead and, especially with the lead, just go ahead and, and, and down this ball. It's it's not intended for people now to take kickoffs back for touchdowns like it used to be uh, with the rule. But, again, it's a wash, and uh, App State trying to pick up where they left off. So Brian London is eligible to return for Texas State. 
the leading tackler after a targeting call in the first half last week at Georgia State. He's not on the field on this first down play. As Zach Thomas will throw, bat it up in the air. Thomas then swats it down. It was Ishmael Davis there for the Bobcats. And that's a great play by a defensive lineman. Again, if you cannot get to the quarterback, get your hands up in those passing lanes. And you know, depending on how that ball caroms up in the air, that could have been an interception by the same guy that deflects the ball. And wisely, Zach Thomas gets the ball down to the ground so it cannot be intercepted. Just a fifth incompletion for Thomas here in this contest. And now Brian London takes the field. Everett Withers said, I'd be fine if I told you my opinion on the targeting call last week. But London, 79 tackles this season, 311 in his career. And it's Evans with a big hole on second down. And Darrington Evans putting on the Jets. 79 yards. Touchdown. And it's a simple off tackle play. And when you get that rushing lane, it's a foot race. And that's what you want if you're a running back. Make everything a foot race. And you don't even have to switch the ball into the outside arm because that arm was churning. And now that 40 becomes a double that. And it's about an 80 yard run there. As you mentioned, 79. And it's a touchdown in one play. Darrington Evans in the first half had five yards rushing. Came in averaging six a carry. 79-yard touchdown will help that out. In place of the injured Jalen Moore, arguably the best tailback in the Sun Belt coming into this season, all-conference rusher, led the Sun Belt in rushing last season. Ankle injury ending his season in career early for App State. Darrington Evans and this App State offense have come to play here today, 28 zip. You can see today's tailgaters of the game on Bobcat Vision. Scoring drives for App State in this contest. 67, 70, 95, and then 79 yards all on the touchdown run by Darrington Evans, his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. The Rubino kick and return just shy of the five yard line. Down the sideline. This is going to be good starting field position again for Texas State. Pass midfield, Pacheco takes it to the App State 44. Well, he's been a weapon. The problem is who needs to be the scorer for the Bobcats because these are great returns. You see here, yeah, and I'm just admiring it because I used to have the opportunity to do that, and I would have loved to have a game where I'm, you know, 60 yards a pop returning, but you don't want them on kickoffs, you want them on punts. <laughs> Texas State in the first half, 119 total yards, just 27 in the second quarter. Tyler Vitt in for the injured Willie Jones, who hurt his shoulder on the Bobcats' first drive. Vitt 9 of 15 passing for 41 yards and an untimely interception. Deep in App State territory, he scrambles here for close to two. Yeah, and again, the ball starting on the App State side of the 50. And as you mentioned, David, several occasions that's happened, but the problem is no return on the scoreboard. Last touchdown allowed by App State in the fourth quarter of their loss at Georgia Southern, October 25th. Only points Coastal Carolina had a week ago on a pick six. Fumble on the exchange to Watts, and Vitt able to dive and recover, but a loss back to the 49. Well, that's tough because that, that play had some promise. But, again, it's the exchange, and you don't want that ball on the turf because that's how things started going bad for the offense with Willie Jones in the first quarter. Texas State 3 of 7 on thirds in the first half. Most of those, third, medium, or short. Here, that's third and 14. Vitt with time up the middle, finds Brown, but well short of the first down, and Jordan Fair throws him down. That's unfortunate because I think they're going to lose yards from where they started. They're going to go from the 44 for the, to the 45 of App State and then wind up having to bring the punt to, onto the field. You can pin them down, but again, we saw a 79-yard run and then also a drive that started from App State's own five in the first half go for a touchdown. Fumble the key play on this drive, and so Texas State will punt it away. Clayton Stewart, his third punt of the contest. First two close to being downed deep in App State territory, but touchbacks, and here Clayton Stewart gets help. 
Teammates turn around in time, and the ball down at the one-yard line. A little bit of life, perhaps, for this Texas State team struggling against one of the best of the Sun Belt. Twenty-eight nothing our score. App State. Their last offensive play, a 79-yard touchdown run by Darrington Evans. Here they'll have the ball at their own one after the brilliant Clayton Stewart punt. Great news earlier today for the Mountaineers. Troy went on the road, knocked off Georgia Southern 35-21, meaning if App State wins out, they will be East Division champs and take part in the Sun Belt Championship game on December 1st. Thomas faked the handoff and was able to scramble to give his offense a little more room to the four. Yeah, and right there, Nicholas Daniels reading the play. And the teammates took care of the running back, and Daniels takes care of Thomas. Daniels second on the Bobcats in tackles, 47 in his last five games, and he's led the Bobcats in tackles in their last two. He and Brian London make a formidable duel at inside linebacker. Incomplete. Trying to come back for the football was Thomas Hennigan, and good coverage by Morris as App State continues to test the true freshman today. Absolutely. And the other thing is good pressure in the face of Thomas for that throw. It was a good throw, but again, not enough reaction time, and that makes it difficult for a receiver trying to turn around. I don't care if it's front shoulder or back shoulder. Texas State likely will ensure themselves a really good field position that they can make the third down stop here. And here's where the decision making of Thomas has been beneficial for the Mountaineers for most of this game. He's 16 to 22 passing, hands it off and nothing doing. Marcus Williams Jr. might have just gotten a yard. So App State plays it safe with a comfortable lead, but they'll have to punt deep in their own territory. Yeah, and this may be an opportunity. With such good return yards coming from Texas State, you know, sometimes you think, well, maybe you'll go ahead and try to block this. You know what, set up the return. Again, you're going to be on the App State side of the 50, and maybe with a good return, you can get some points on the board in this drive. Clayton Howell averaging 35 yards a punt. This will be his third of the game going against the win. Hutch White is set up at the App State 45. Here they come. Howell gets it away. White, the fair catch called. Men who are beating the dead horse here, but that's now the seventh time <laughs> Texas State will have the ball in App State territory. Can they score? Another good opportunity coming up. Good news for Appalachian State. Anthony Flory is on the field. He was banged up in the first half. The all-conference linebacker for the Mountaineers. He and Jordan Fair make a great one-two punch at inside linebacker for App State. Caleb Twyford with a first down carry. He'll be dragged down just shy of the App State 30. Jordan Ferris had himself a whale of a year. For more on that, let's go down to Brooke. Jordan Ferris, the reigning Sunbelt Conference Defensive Player of the Week, three sacks last week in the win at Coastal Carolina, four and a half sacks on the year. In a window, the catch made. And into the red zone, that is Jamarie Sharid, who has been banged up with a toe injury this season. The true freshman from Houston making his fifth catch of the year. That was a dart by Vitt. And, you know, maybe he's settling in. You know, wasn't anticipating playing much today at all. And now he's leading another drive on the other side of his 50. Vitt on the keeper up the middle. And past the 10, a gain of nine. Good decision and a nice little shifty move in between the tackles. Go the quarterback and 11 into the red zone and now second and short. There's fair on the tackle. For all the times the Bobcats have been in plus territory, just their second time in the red zone this afternoon. Twyford. He may be just shy of the first down marker, which is at the eight. If something's good more. Get the double team block and let that rusher just behind it and cut square the shoulders. Even if you fall forward, you're likely to pick up one yard. 
They'll go heavy. Keenan Brown is in the backfield. You remember I said that? And Anthony D. Taylor <laughs> is in the backfield with him. And now Vitt shifts out. How about your Wildcat quarterback, the tight end Keenan Brown, who fakes the handoff, and he might not have gotten to the marker. In fact, he's well short. It's going to be a loss. Back to the 10, and it's fourth and two. You know what happened there? He let his athleticism be beat him. If he just goes straight ahead and doesn't try to cut to the right and bull over Jordan Fair, he probably gets the first down because that stalemate and you with the head of steam can fall forward. But here they go again on fourth down. App State fans who have made the trip making noise on the far end of Bobcat Stadium. Taylor the tailback, a four-wide set. The handoff, and Taylor has the first down. Needed two and got four. And you see a smaller rusher, but he goes north and south. Well, he goes, yes, he does go north to south because that's how it is. And you see just by squaring your shoulders, it's hard to tackle anyone because you make yourself basically as wide as can be with the shoulder pads, and you've got to wrap all that around. And all these guys are in the weight room doing squats of some <laughs> weight proportion, and it works. And low man wins. Vitt rolling out. Has Brown open. Finds him. Keenan Brown. Touchdown. His fifth receiving touchdown of the season. Texas State cashes in. And a well-devised play there after picking up fourth and two, David. And the pick six. <laughs> Picky Mallet, he was wide open in the far flats. And a nice touch on the ball by Vitu. Didn't have to knock him down, just get the ball out there and lead his receiver into the end zone. You can see why with his size and athleticism, why offensive coordinator Zach Kaur tries so hard to get Keenan Brown involved. That time, the reception out in the flat. And Texas State on the board. Gosh, you just wish that you would have called that play when you had the uh, interference in the end zone. It was first and goal from the two. That play works. It's going to be hard to stop six in the flat. Chris Kessler, the true freshman from Longview, Texas, the honors on the PAT, and able to just get it through. So now 28-7 the score. First touchdown this App State defense has given up since late October. Well, listen, if the defense of the Bobcats can get another stop, it could become interesting. Yeah, yeah. They, the, the Bobcats have played well enough to have more than seven points. That's really what the disappointing thing is to this point, but it's great to see that the ice has been broken. James Sherman, the ball teed up at the 35. This is App State's third straight road game and their final road game of the season. They'll be home to Georgia State and Troy. Troy the Saturday after Thanksgiving in a game which likely will decide the Sun Belt's East Division. Louisiana Monroe, ULM leading the West Division coming into today. And up ended around the 20 yard line. Not much room whatsoever on the return by Darrington Evans. Did have a 100 yard kick return for a score at Penn State. This Texas State special teams unit's done very well against an App State special teams group with four touchdowns on the year coming in. You're absolutely right. And, you know, to be able to hold your opponent that has such a good balanced offense and defense to really negate their special teams. And, and you mentioned something that the rankings are very high in the top five for return yardage and uh, special teams play. Uh, that's been a testament to this Bobcat effort. This App State team was ranked number tw 25 in the nation before the loss of Georgia Southern. Second Sun Belt team ever to be ranked. There's Evans on the carry. Nicholas Daniels, one of the Bobcats there, and it's a loss of one. Well, remember, I, I thought that some points on the board would really infuse a defense yeah, that's been playing well. I mean, it's really not uh, on the defense. You saw the long run in the last series, the two plays and 79 yards. But outside of that, uh, this defense has really been uh, good in containing uh, the Mountaineers. Defensive coordinator Chris Wood says of his Bobcat defense, we have good kids who believe in what we're selling them. It's been a change team since the second half of the loss at Louisiana. After that, 
close losses to Georgia Southern and ULM before back-to-back -back wins, their first winning streak in four years. It'll be third and 10 coming up now. Cordell Rogers coming in. And it's third down. And a good, good job there. Actually, no, that was Ryan London, excuse me. The three and the nine look alike, but I said, wait a minute, that's not a quarter cornerback build. <laughs> Chance for decent field position again if Texas State can make the third down stuff. First down marker at the 30 for Zach Thomas in the Mountaineer offense. Defense has to be inspired here to get a stop on third down. Blitz. Thomas in trouble, scrambles away. He'll go for the 30-yard line and diving forward, He's going to be marked, it looks like, right at the 30. Now, because he didn't slide, the dive forward means the ball is marked where he finishes the dive, and he just got the 10 yards to move the chains. He took a shot, too, though, as we can see on the replay. A nice change of direction, but Daniels gets a nice shot on that right shoulder and really lets Thomas have it. What a tough runner. I mean, this is maybe the most physical team in the Sun Belt, and Thomas, one of the players who embodies that. Now with time to throw on first down. Catch made, enough for the first. Just past the 40-yard line, and that's Sutton, the Kansas State transfer. He has a good pitch and catch there, and even though uh, the ball and the receiver go to the ground, the yardage is picked up, and it moves the chains. This is an experienced offensive line. Victor Johnson, the left tackle, all-conference, making his 35th straight start today. Left guard Ryan Newsel, 14 straight, and center Noah Hand in his 21st straight start. Right tackle Chandler Greer is a senior. Misdirection and with room to run, Thomas, Thomas gets four more yards. He's up to 57 yards on the ground, in addition to 17 of 23 passing for 195. Well, when you see in the replay, Thomas makes a quick decision to get the ball tucked away and get the yardage he can because he realizes all of his receivers are covered. There's no sense of standing around, taking the sack, or even throwing the ball out of bounds not to lose yardage. Go get some yards. Thomas was the number two quarterback in 2017, appeared in just four games. Then his first start at Penn State, 313 total yards. One of the best QBs already in the Sun Belt. Zips that pass completed to Jalen Virgil past the Texas State 45. I'm feeling confident in his receivers. He can put a little more on that pass, and he did. He threw a dart about 12 yards downfield. And you have a, a receiver that can make an adjustment because you're coming to the middle of the field, so you don't have to worry about a boundary. Virgil in motion. He'll get the toss from Thomas, looking for the edge and brought down from behind. Gain of a couple. Good pursuit by the Bobcats coming near side to us. And you have a lot of speed coming around this near side on the left side of the offensive line. But tracking are the Bobcats, and it's a short gain on first down. That's Brian London, 79 tackles coming into this contest. 8.8 .8 tackles a game, second in the Sun Belt. He's been something else since his freshman year in 2013, third in the nation in tackles per game and solo tackles per game. Again, plenty of time. Lofting it, looking for Sutton, tipped away, incomplete. Great defense in the secondary. It was Jalen Smith who's in place of the injured Ja'Shawn Waddy at weak safety. The junior transfer from Houston tipped it away, and Cordell Rogers also had good coverage downfield. The thing is, once you commit to not allowing that receiver to get over the top of you. You can stay right in that hip pocket and then you can adjust as the defender to the ball to try to make the catch or knock it away, which you saw textbook there by the Bobcats. App State six of 10 on thirds. They need seven here. And there's where Zach Thomas has been so tough in his decision making to make the right call with the ball on third down. A four wide set, Evans in the backfield. Blitz. Up the middle, catch made. Forward progress will give him the first. Believe that was Malik Williams, sophomore from Chester, South Carolina. And another good pass with a lot of zip on it. Looks like he's trying to turn two from <laughs> as a middle infielder because after he makes the decision of where he's going with the ball, there's a lot of heat 
on that pass. You saw on the Ray play. Look at everyone pick up the blitz, including the tailback Evans. For as good of a runner Evans has been, first in the Sun Belt and all purpose yards per game in conference competition, picking up that late blitzer that gave Thomas just enough time to throw. The fake to Evans. Thomas is going to keep it again. Daniels chases him out of bounds, but another good run on first down. This time it's six. And again, it's the smart decision making. You don't have to throw the ball away if you can get the edge. Two strides and you get four yards, three and you get six. 6 1, 200. Sophomore from Trustville, Alabama. Zach Thomas. Well, you run fast too because you don't want to get tackled. So you have an incentive to beat your defender around the end so you don't hit the ground. Thomas came in over 1,400 all purpose yards. He'll hand it off this time to Evans. He'll get the push, and again, for about three, it'll be third and one. And a good job by Texas State, but still a good enough push with the rusher that has six yards to get up ahead of steam and then square those shoulder pads. You know, the, the whole idea is to get low and push the pile. A drive that has lasted almost six minutes following the Texas State score. Zach Thomas and his offense need just a yard. Pistol set with Evans, the tailback. He'll get the call, stacked up. London wraps him up, throws him back to prevent forward progress, and it's a loss of one. Man, a good defensive stand by Texas State on the defensive line. And again, it's low man wins, but you just have to get enough push. And right there you see breaking through the gaps come the maroon shirts. Offense stays on the field. Fourth down and two. It's been an inspired defensive play by the Bobcats today. A 21-point lead. Scott Satterfield keeps his offense on the field, looking to continue this drive, which is approaching seven minutes. The fake to Evans. Thomas, the run, catch made, Colin Reed, and enough for the first down. He got the pass off just in time before getting hit. Well, I'll tell you, that takes a, a, a lot of thought because you fake into the line and then you almost cross that line of scrimmage before you toss the ball. But again, a good decision by Zach Thomas. Henry Pearson might have gotten away with a block in the back. Instead, the drive continues from the Texas State 17. Thomas. Hit as he throws up the sideline. What a catch, but out of bounds. Colin Reed, 6'4", 248. Or rather, that was Pearson, I'm sorry, at 6'3", 243, leaping to make the grab, but couldn't get a foot in. No, but a good athletic catch. And you like to see those tight ends make those types of catches. Uh, but again, the defender realized that the sideline was the friend. And so if you can make a sizable receiver, yeah, he's a great target, but then he has to come down on a small landing space, and even with one foot, still couldn't get it in. Texas State late getting their 11th man on, and Clifton Lewis, six on the play clock for Thomas. On the jet sweep, Heath. Haven't heard much from him since back-to-back -back receptions from Thomas, including a touchdown on the Mountaineers' first drive. Heath marked down at the 12. Good pursuit there by uh, the Bobcats inside out. They recognize that here came that kind of jet sweep, pass, toss, whatever you want to call it, inside. And six Bobcats there to ensure that that did not go where. Texas, State's, Texas State's touchdown came with eight minutes to go in the third. They have not had the ball since. App State will have it to begin the fourth. Third down from the Texas State 12, up 21 on the road. Texas State football powered by the new 2019 Ram 1500, built to serve. Fourth quarter begins in San Marcos. David Salzman, Steve Foster, App State up 28-7. Third down, deep in Texas State territory. Zach Thomas lobbing it for Sutton and too long, incomplete. Looking to beat Jerron Morris. That was that little wheel route. You get somebody coming inside, you get somebody going outside, and that was going to be tough because the degree of difficulty over the shoulder away from 
Uh, the pass was going to be tough, but now here come the field goal unit. Chandler Staten, sophomore, six of eight on field goal tries this season with his long of 40, this well within that range. 29-yarder from just inside the left hash. And Staten easily kicks it through. A 31-7 lead. App State on its way to 5-1 in the Sun Belt, controlling its own destiny for a berth in the Sun Belt title game. Back after this. App State a 31-7 lead over Texas State. If you joined us late, Texas State starting quarterback Willie Jones. And it's hard to see there now. He's sitting on the bench, but hurt his shoulder on the Bobcats' first drive. Jones fumbled on the play, and that shoulder, or that arm rather, is in a sling. And don't know the exact prognosis for Jones, but not good news, of course, as we see Jones now in sweats and on the sideline. Well, another good return by this Texas State kick return unit. That's Haydell taking it past the 40-yard line. That's impressive because, listen, these guys are making moves and they're getting good field position, but now they have to convert. Good return, but Haydell limping off the field after this one. I like the, you know, returns are an art, not a science. And you just have to feel your way, and you have to make that cut and, and find your way upfield. And uh, the Bobcats have been impressive today. The return game is the big reason why the Bobcats have had such good field position. They have just 161 total yards, but they've had the ball seven times in App State territory. Twyford unable to turn the corner against this App State defense, a gain of three on first down. And you just, that's the pursuit of this defense, and we've mentioned how good they have been throughout the season, and you just can't get the long gainer, but still three yards and using the vision to work outside, coming near side to the sidelines gets you at least three, and that's a good gain. Not what you like to see on first down, but good gain. Yardage, uh, three yards there, David. Noel Cook, his eighth tackle. Junior from Reedsville, North Carolina, from his outside linebacker spot has been busy. Vit looks better, more comfortable. Vitt is 12 of 18 passing. Had a very good third quarter. Pitch to Twyford here. Tay Hayes is going to hold him up. Loss of three. App State strings that play out. You know, that's where Zach Thomas has been throwing the ball. He's been running down the line of scrimmage, and then he tosses the ball. Here when you pitch the ball back, doesn't give that guy on your team any momentum getting upfield. But when you throw it forward just a tad, you see how it's benefited App State. How much time will Vitt have here on third of eleven and third and eleven? Well, it depends if that blitz is dialed up again in his face. He was three of three passing in the second quarter for 24 yards. 12 of 18 for the game, 65 yards. Touchdown pass to Keenan Brown and an untimely interception in the second quarter. Deep in App State territory. Backpedaling, lobbing it for Brown and unable to haul it in incomplete. Brown thinks he should have had that one. He had it in his bread basket, and maybe due to the coverage of the free safety, Austin Exford, Brown unable to haul it in. Well, you're right about that, but Vitt throws a well-timed and touched pass right where he needed to, and that ball should have been hauled in by Brown, and I think the discontent kept Brown on the turf a little bit longer because he's like, I should have, and I, sh I know I could have had that. Brown, touchdown catch in the third quarter, his fifth of the year. Clayton Stewart on the punt for the fourth time. Hennigan back for App State. He'll get a few yards on the return. It was 21-0 App State at the half. A Darrington Evans 79-yard touchdown run, 24 seconds into the third quarter. Put this one away for good. And App State's defense once again doing the job. Catch made, hard hit. Henry Pearson not close to the first down. Jalen Smith, in place of the injured Ja'Shawn Waddies, had a nice game at weak safety. Well, that was a great tackle right at the point of the catch, and that's what you want to see again. 
pass defense needs to not just cover the football but make a tackle and right there you see a jolt backwards that's textbook and it's safe it doesn't bring out the yellow hanky and it also brings out the punt team smith from houston transfer from fresno state six tackles in two games coming in clayton howell on the punt pressure coming howell gets it away this is a nice one with the wind at his back and white fair catch call good punt nice hang time and that's the wise thing. You want your punt returner, the first thing you want the punt returner to do is catch the ball because there's hidden yardage if you let the ball bounce and it goes another 10, 15, 20 yards. You do not want that. Right there, the ball is at the 25, and it could have been inside the 20, but a great job by the return team. We're not going to junior college, right? We are going to build up this very young team. There have been so many bumps in the road. And one reason why coming in with momentum, such a shame to see Willie Jones injured in the first drive of the contest. Vitt somehow able to get it to his man, Elijah Rogers, as he was hammered. And Rogers has first down yardage. Well, Vitt has settled, settled down. You know, if he could have played a, a half and then made the second half count, playing a lot better. And right there, that pass was not thrown in desperation. That was to a man, and that's a first down. Davis Gaither chasing it the whole way. Rogers, senior from Metairie, Louisiana, his fifth catch of the season. Shareed, one of these young men we're talking about. I mentioned he hadn't played in a while with a toe injury, but the true freshman from Houston, now with a couple of catches today and part of the bright future of this receiving core. You're absolutely right, and a good pass again that moves the chains. And you can see Vitt settling in, even against a great team in the Sun Belt as App State. Came in after Willie Jones got hurt in the loss at UTSA and performed valiantly. Bobcats had a chance to win late in the fourth. Different story here against one of the best in the league. As he swings it out to Robert Brown and gets crunched just past midfield. It'll be second down to Marco Jackson, redshirt freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina there. And he, being the defender, as you mentioned, Jackson just comes over and does a good job. He had a lot of space to run and get momentum up. Trey Cobb, the other inside linebacker. App State has his backups in defensively. Good run past the 35. A hard run by Brown. Desmond Franklin there. Good hard run. And again, the chains are moving fairly consistently for this Bobcat offense, and Vitt doing a good job. Under 10 minutes remaining in the fourth. Texas State at Troy next week. They host Arkansas State two weeks from now. Vitt backpedaling, lobbing it up and incomplete. <laughs> for one of the few times today we're able to call number four's name, Clifton Duck. He's the preseason defensive player of the year in the Sun Belt. Street and Smith preseason second team All-American. He's tied for the lead nationally with 11 interceptions since the start of 2016, but he has none this year. And why? Well, why we've rarely called his name. Teams will rarely throw his way. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, not, not at four. Yeah. Not on four yeah. defensively, anyway. The other three members of the starting secondary for App State all have multiple picks in 2018. Fake and Vitt. Flory was back in and makes the tackle. Listen, that was a great decision. It's just that you have a guy that's not as strong as the defender and can't break free, but the decision was correct. Look at the pressure in the backfield so fast. This App State team, this is what they do. They are not flashy, but they are so efficient. I really don't see a weakness. I mean, they do everything well. You just can't make mistakes against these guys in Texas State with a couple of turnovers in App State territory hurting their chances at even being in this one in the fourth. They're three of ten of the Bobcats on third down today. Again pressured as App State just brought three. Vitt rolling out. Throws it away. You talk about buying time with your feet. It's just that no one was open and wisely throw the ball away. You can live to fight another down, and it's your ball. Third and nine is not impossible, and this Bobcat offense has found at least a little rhythm, and they've broken the ice. 
Demetrius Taylor, sophomore defensive tackle, made the hit on Vett as he released the football. And the offense will stay on the field on fourth and nine. First down markers at the 24. Again, App State brings three. And with space, Anthony D. Taylor, maybe that last lunge is enough. The mark is right at the first down marker, and they will move the chains. He just got nine yards. A good choice by Vitt again. Nice touch on the ball. And a little check down route. Make yourself available if you're the running back. And the great thing was there was blocking first before the release to the near side to us and just out of the backfield on the left and move the chains. Fit this half, 7 of 10 passing for 59 yards. He'll look to throw here. Scrambling straight ahead with room. Taylor provides the block and a flag down. Taylor might have held at the very end. Enough of the first, but probably coming back. And that's unfortunate because that was another great decision by Vitt. And you know what? Why is it he gets to the sideline? Because then he knows that the defense is only coming from one direction, and he wants to protect his body. Balls in the outside arm, which is great. So everything is done technically correct by the quarterback, except, you know, you got that crew that wants Holy. to throw that flag. Offense, number 25, 10 yards from the spot. Replay the down. It was a good call. You know, he held the block at first, and then the, the tug in the jersey. And the crew is right there. And a lot of times you don't have to do anything like that. Just place yourself between the defender and the rusher and kind of just matador them because you can't call. There's no penalty for matador. <laughs> Spot foul, so the ball at the 29. It's first and 15. Watson motion. Halfway through the fourth. Trouble. And Brown drops another one. Turned his head too early, second and 15 coming. Listen, another great choice by Vitt, and I love that play call, especially to a big receiver such as Brown. He, he kind of tippy-toes into the middle, and he's there. You know he probably could have broken at least one tackle, and it would have at least been manageable for the next down, still second and 15. But I love the play call, and Vitt really has gathered some composure here in the second half, David. Came in completing 66% of his passes. 16 of 26 today. Pressure, look out. Lobbing it, and Watts will make the grab, but they'll rule that the ball hit the turf. Maybe a good thing, as he was going to catch that pass about five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's right. But at least the awareness of Vitt to not just throw the ball away. He was intending to get the ball out as best that he could. And it just didn't have enough on the pass because of the pressure. And... Tyler Watts just couldn't make the catch. This is just a hard assignment for this Texas State offensive line. Morgan Moore at right tackles, a true freshman. And at left guard is the walk-on Tate Heitmeyer. Aaron Brewer, the junior center, most experienced member of the Texas State offensive line. Vitt is time to throw this time. We'll lob it to Taylor, and Taylor brought down ahead of the original line to scrimmage at the 23. Duck on the stop. Well, listen again, time provided by Vid. He found someone. You know, this offense is moving, and you get a block by the running back before he releases. You can't coach it any better. It's just that App State pursues well to the ball once the reception has been made. Texas State converted their last fourth and nine. Here, fourth and a long eight. Interestingly enough, Brown not in the game at this point. It is Elijah Rogers, the tight end. A three wide set, Taylor in the backfield. In the pocket, Vitt, look out, sacked. <sighs> App State holds again. Chris Willis, sophomore from Shelby, North Carolina, first sack of the year. For all the effort, eight times Texas State has been in App State territory. Seven points against the best defense in the Sun Belt. Another methodical, efficient game, both sides of the football for the Mountaineers of Appalachian State on their way to 7-2. 
Dominic Heath on first down, takes it to the 33. A game of five with Brian London on the stop. David Salzman with Steve Foster and Brooke Shoemaker. App State approaching 400 yards of offense. We talked about it. Not flashy, but we see why they're averaging 38 points a game because they just don't hurt themselves. Efficient and effective. Texas State, two turnovers in App State territory. And even with that, you look at the stats, App State defense has held the Bobcats to 217 yards. Big running room and breaking tackles in the Texas State territory. The true freshman Cameron Peoples taking advantage of his time from Lineville, Alabama. His first carries of the year. It's a good run around the end. Last play shows London with the tackle against Heath, but then you get then a follow-up. And as you mentioned, six for the rush, far side. And, and correction, this is people's second game of the season. In his first, he had nine carries, 53 yards, and getting the carries here late. Another one for close to four. Zach Thomas still in at quarterback. Sophomore from Trustville, Alabama. 24 to 34 for 234. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. 10 timely carries for 63 yards. He has just been sacked once. That was in the first quarter. Peoples again. Oh, it takes a lick and loses a yard. Gavin Graham, junior from Austin on the stop. His dad played six years in the NFL with the Detroit Lions. Graham here on the hit. Yeah, and uh, I had a shout out on social media. That one of my buddies, Big Dave, saying that that was his boy. And well, he showed him, showed him proud right there. William had 11 career interceptions at Texas up the road in Austin before his NFL career. And Gavin coming in with 20 tackles on the season. Third Good down. Stop. Good stop. Blitz coming, stepping up, dumping it off, Virgil. First down to the 25. What Zach Thomas never looks like is in fear of anything bad happening. The poise he has had, even as the pressure comes to him, this guy's just a sophomore and he has been worldly impressive today. Yeah, but you know, when you have a certain type of air about yourself, and, and it's the personality, and, and quarterback, that's what you want. App State, the first program ever to win three straight bowl games in their first three seasons that they were eligible. Longtime FCS member, back when it was known as Division I AA, three straight national titles, 2005 through 2007. It is Mountaineer country in Boone, North Carolina. That pass behind Virgil incomplete. Well, that was a little lack of concentration. Ball was thrown a little bit behind the receiver. It's a good choice. But uh, sometimes you miss. App State, one of the best environments in the Sun Belt, playing what they call the Rock. Yeah, wonderful. Now, I've never been there, but you see the pictures in Boone, North Carolina. That's where you want to go for the fall, and just the, the environment and the atmosphere. And, of course, what a following they've had in Boone for so many years. First couple of years transitioning to the FBS were struggles, but App State has been a power, whether in 1AA, we're now the FBS in the Sun Belt, right number 25 earlier in the year. That handoff to Demarcus Harper, sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, and Graham on the tackle. And Bobcats still playing respectable defense on the defensive line. And, you know, again, Coach Withers an alum from App State, so he doesn't, you know, in any game, but in particular against his alma mater. When we talked to Coach Withers, Everett Withers for Texas State earlier, he used the word maturity quite a bit. He yes. said, when we could start to mature, we felt like we could go in a run, and they won back-to-back -back games for the first time in four years. Now it's another test of that maturity. We don't know how long Willie Jones is going to be out. Right. Tyler Vitt has played admirably in his place. It doesn't get much easier. They are at Troy next week, and right. much like App State, Troy. Timeout. Time out. Appalachia State. State. First charge timeout. Third, 30 second timeout. Troy in line for an East Division title in the Sun Belt. They're undefeated in Sun Belt play. They won at Georgia Southern. Right. 
Troy hosting Texas State next week. And two weeks from today, the big one in Boone, it will be Troy at App State, likely for that East Division crown. In the West Division, <laughs> it's anyone's contest. You can argue Louisiana has been playing the best football in the Sun Belt the last few weeks, but they had a rough start. They fell at home to Coastal Carolina. And so behind ULM to begin today, ULM taking on South Alabama today in Mobile. And they have a 24-10 lead as ULM. If they hold on, they'll be bowl eligible and four and two in the Sun Belt. Matt Viator has done a world of a job in Monroe taking over that program after a long stint at FCS Power McNeese State. Louisiana, by the way, leads Georgia State 13-7 at the break and Arkansas State 27-6 lead at Coastal at the half. After the timeout, Thomas scrambling on third down. He has the first. And again, getting the momentum upfield. And just, I love Zach Thomas's clock. The clock in his head just seems to know when it's time to go. You know, he's a guy that's not going to stay to the end of the party and get in trouble. He's going to leave, be in his car, and back to wherever he needs to be. And he's done that on the field, and that's been such a benefit for the Mountaineers today. He's up to 76 yards rushing. 323 total yards for the sophomore quarterback, Zach Thomas. First and goal. Peoples, big blocker in front of him. Cameron Peoples, his first touchdown as a Mountaineer. He'll be mobbed in the end zone. Nine-yard TD run. It's six for six. As he goes to the far side on the left side. And again, nice action in the backfield as Zach Thomas comes right then it's a counter move left and then it's just a foot race you want to get to that sideline express and get to that pylon and that's exactly what happened Noah Hannon with the big block and App State the emphatic finish here now up 30 flag before the PAT a false start on the Mountaineers and again, false start. False start. False start. Offense. Offense. Number 88. Number 88. Five yard penalty. penalty. Replay the try. Uh, not the score, not really indicative of the effort that Texas State gave today. But when you can't get points on the board, going from the 20s to the 20s or even to the twos aren't going to do you any good in the end. Eight times Texas State has been in App State territory, and yet they'll be down 31. If this PAT by Staten goes through, and he's now 74 of 74 on PATs in his career. By the way, he's just a sophomore. That's how great this App State offense has been in his two years in Boone. Fans who have made the trip, yeah, this is cold for Central Texas. It's not for the people of Boone where the highs, by the way, in the 30s with a, a heavy wind. Uh, they like this uh, high 40s here. In fact, Scott Satterfield was telling us the App State head coach, uh, much rather play here in early November than in mid-September, which is when these two teams met in St. Marcos one year ago, and App State had to hold on for dear life. A tackle of Texas State's Elijah King at the one-foot line preserved a 20-19 win. No such drama here in 2018 in St. Marcos. You're absolutely right. And again, I think still something to build on because as you mentioned, the schedule still has opponents that are very <laughs> uh, good and this Bobcat team considering the quarterback play you don't know but if the fact of the matter is that Willie Jones isn't going to play at least you can give it the reps during this week to have him build on what he's done and he's done some good things here in this game this afternoon. At Troy the Bobcats will be next week and then two weeks from now here on the CW Austin at ESPN 3 Arkansas State to wrap up the 2018 campaign. Texas State will have it past the 35. That's big Jamar Daniels on the return, one of the up men. <laughs> so, that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets in the stats too. That's the beautiful thing. They don't think he played. Yes, yes, I did. I had a kickoff return. <laughs> They're like, kickoff return? So to wrap this up, 156 to go. Jalen Gibson in a quarterback. Redshirt freshman from Mejia, Texas. His fourth game of the season. 
He was in a fight with Vid and Jones for the starting quarterback position before the season started. Gibson dragged down for a short game. So Appalachian State will improve to seven and two. They'll go to 37. Season. Four all time against Texas State. Appalachian State is twice in Texas in their history. That was the last two years here in San Marcos. Fumbled snap on the ground, and App State with the recovery. Third Texas State turnover. One thing Texas State had done so much better coming in is protecting the football. Plus three in turnovers. The last two, minus three here. After Gibson couldn't handle the fumble, Mike Stout with the recovery. That was tough. You just don't want to see that because at least if you kind of finish this game out and you don't have any more scores, you know, you don't want to feel like you got sloppy at the end. App State will just have to run out the clock. Texas State with their timeouts left and no reason to use them. Just an efficient performance. And what's even most impressive is that this is App State's third straight road game. They have not played at home in quite some time. They'll be happy to be back in front of their fans at the Rock and Boone. Home games against Georgia State and Troy to wrap up the season. Their last home game was October 20th, holding on to a 27-17 win over Louisiana. Well, good she stop by London there, you know, and I think the defense is motivated not to give up any more points. It would be nice to say that the Bobcats were driving to see if they could put on some more points, but right here, I think a good defensive stand would be helpful at the end of this game. Just a couple of plays left. Jacob Huseman is the quarterback, sophomore from Bradenton, Florida, who started an App State's win last week at Coastal Carolina with Zach Thomas out with a concussion. No surprise, a handoff. It looks like Demarcus Harper may end this contest. App State does not have to run another play. And well, for Texas State, this was a litmus test. And even without the turnovers, tough to say whether they could have defeated App State. But the lesson is you have to cash in. And you certainly can't make mistakes against a team that has been the class of the Sun Belt for quite a few years running now. App State will take the trip back to Boone, North Carolina with a 38-7 win, improving to 5-1 in the Sun Belt, 7-2 overall. Texas State falls to 3-7. Yeah, a valiant attempt, but again, the attempts and more victories aren't what you want. You wanted to extend the two-game uh, streak to three, even against a quality opponent in, in a very formidable Appalachian State. App State, 468 yards of offense, 247 through the year, 221 on the ground. Zach Thomas, 323 total yards for the Mountaineer quarterback, 25 of 36 passing for 247. He added 76 yards on the ground. Tyler Vitt in place of the injured Willie Jones, 17 to 28 for 106 yards. Two weeks from today will be the season finale for Texas State. And we'll have that for you here on the CW Austin and on ESPN3 as the Bobcats will host their West Division rivals in the Sun Belt in Arkansas State. Final thoughts, to see before we go off the year. Well, I just hope that uh, everything is okay with the injured Bobcats and also that they can find a way to get into the end zone next week and really make it a contest because I think this team is, as I like to say now, been using trending up. Another tough opponent coming up next Saturday as Texas State will be at Troy and hope for the good health of Willie Jones, who was knocked out with an injured shoulder on the game's first drive. For my broadcast partner, Steve Foster, Brooke Shoemaker on the sideline, our spotter Ben Goins, our producer Corey Wiesland, and our entire crew, we thank you for joining us from Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. I'm David Salzman saying so long after App State pulls away for the 38-7 win.